Dirk, I did my doctorate in science. Yeah. You did yours in theology. Science and theology, many people say, should talk together. Mm -hmm. But they have radically different methodologies. How, how do they talk together? Well, my first conviction is, uh, uh, I think there's an American saying, good fences make good neighbors. Yeah? <laughs> and uh, if you have good fences, if you have uh, distinctions that are appropriate and that, uh, so to say, secure the territory, of each discipline, I think that's a first step, and a good step, and a very uh, a necessary step. Uh, and then the second step is to talk, uh, to have some kind of uh, traffic going uh, over the border and going from here to there. And so that is my, my image, my view of that. So keep those two enterprises separate, and then try to figure out um, how um, can we deal with each other? How can we ask questions and receive answers from the other side? And for, for, the, for that you have to, uh, so to say, cross borders. You have to step out of your territory. Uh, so if you want, as a theologian as I am, uh, if you want to talk with science, you have to forget a little th of your theology. <laughs> yeah, have you, make, uh, you have to get acquainted with uh, what science does, and, and then try to find a level on which you can talk. Many scientists say you should forget all of your theology, mm -hmm. and uh, that uh, you as a theologian need to talk to me as a scientist if you want to learn something, but I as a scientist have no need to talk to you as a theologian. Well, I think that's, that's not completely wrong. <laughs> I think that's, that's quite right in a sense. In order to be a good uh, particle physicist, you don't need to have theology. Mm -hmm. You have to do your job properly, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Uh, but me, uh, I as a theologian, I have to uh, put flesh to the doctrines, the convictions, the, the ideas and views of uh, Christianity. And in order to do that, I have to learn as much as I can about mm -hmm. the world uh, of uh, uh, reality and what holds everything together and uh, the phenomena of life and so on. So I, I'm much more in need of uh, stuff and uh, information from the outside than is the scientist. But when the scientist comes to ultimate questions, when he asks, what am I doing? What's it, uh, w w what kind of ground do I uh, dig up, uh, how stable is that, is, how fundamental is what is my kind of knowledge that I gain. Uh, then he asks quest questions about his own science, then philosophy comes in, uh, and then uh, slowly religion also uh, comes into the picture, uh, because uh, as I said, ultimate reality, what is it, where does it all come uh, from, and what do we do? with the knowledge that we gained through science. So since you're so familiar with science, uh, where would you take the science? If I came to you and we had these discussions and I was willing to listen mm -hmm. to your theology, how would you draw me in? What, what were the hooks that you would take to uh, have me appreciate the, the bigger fundamental reality in which the science is embedded? I think one hook would be this question what is this whole enterprise science all about? How does it work? What kind of knowledge does it gain? And how um, sufficient and uh, how viable is this knowledge? And sometimes you have uh, a tendency among scientists to, uh, that they show how reality it really is. Yeah? In former times, people thought the uh, sun would r revolve around the earth, but we show it's not the case, it's just an illusion, it's just the other way around. So it's always this uh, pathos, uh, this, this drive of uh, science to reveal as reality as it really is. Yeah, no, I, agree, then, I agree with that, you know, but that's where science is showing how religion was faulty. I'm looking to, there are a lot of examples of that. I'm looking to see where religion can help science understand its place in the world or, or, or anything where religion can contribute to science. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. I don't think that um, religion can contribute to science itself because science is a methodological discipline um, that uh, methodologically uh, cuts off questions which are decisive 
for theological views in order to see the, that the dialogue is necessary. But I think um, theology cannot contri contri contribute something that the scientist just can take and put into his or her theory. Sure, system. sure. Yeah. So, so w w when does the theology science interface occur? Yeah. Where, yeah. where are those boundaries? And, and what happens when science wants to expand its own boundaries into what you think yeah. are religion's territory? I think there are uh, a, few, um, a few occasions where that uh, is uh, vital. One is, uh, as I said, the methodological question, and that uh, is of uh, public, even public importance when science claims we tell you what really is the case. Once I had a discussions, discussion with a biologist who said, you stop uh, talking about life, what l life is, is something we define. I, the biologists, tell you what life is, and you have to learn and listen. And I said, no, that, no, no, life is one of these terms that is not uh, um, prone to this uh, methodological uh, 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 discipline, but it's a broader, uh, broader term which uh, refers to phenomena of uh, everyday life, and here uh, some kind of other rationality uh -huh. comes into play that is not so methodologically disciplined, but that uh, opens uh, the picture and the view. And you ha cannot define life in scientific terms. You deal with certain uh, phenomena uh, of biological uh, uh, nature, but what life as such is, and with all that, what, what you put into it, yeah, uh, it's the normative uh, frame, so to say, uh, that is uh, something w you have to step out of your uh, methodological biology and talk with me on a different level. Mm. You define yourself as a, a hermeneutic naturalist. Yeah. Now, to my mind, that sounds like an internal contradiction, <laughs> because naturalism presupposes that the physical is the only thing that's real, and there is no God, there is no supernaturalism. Yeah. So how do you uh, integrate these opposing forces? I would say there is no supernatural entity or reality in the form of uh, soul, spirit or something, and also God I would not see as uh, interfering with reality through miracles of a supernatural nature, but rather is uh, connecting to reality through uh, luring, inspiration, through uh, emerging uh, f forces and fields uh, that inspire reality, things like that. And that, for, for, uh, for me, is a kind of a hermeneutical um, procedure or have so hermeneutical meaning this, the search for interpretation yeah. and the, yeah. what's happening. The, 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 maybe maybe one one uh, uh, term for that could be striving. That that uh, natural beings strive towards mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Something. Where does that come from? And this striving starts with the the uh, single cell that wants to live and strives mm -hmm. to be itself. A river doesn't want to be a river, a mountain doesn't want to be a mountain, but already a cell wants to be a cell and wants yeah. to strive towards uh, its own existence. And that continues and it grows uh, and it uh, explores more and more uh, fields of possibilities until it comes to human beings who ask for their own existence, for their own meaning. You, you see, there's this natural, materialistic uh, reality that, for example, physics uh, refers to, but out of this reality somehow arises uh, this strife towards understanding and meaning. And this movement, this striving towards meaning, uh, is that metaphorically uh, uh, um, defined by the, by theology, by a god, or or are you because you're saying there are no souls, there are no spirits, mm -hmm. the world is a natural world. You're a naturalist, yeah. but if you have God in there, are you using God metaphorically, or are you using God in some reality? I, I'm using God in some in the sense of some reality. Um, uh, I wouldn't say uh, God is just a metaphor for, so to say, an internal force, but I would say this striving can only be explained, can only be 
understood in its very nature when you think of it as referring to something which is beyond the world. And only then this striving makes sense. If it's just a movement within, uh, so to say, a physical reality, then it comes and it goes and that's, that's the end of it. But only if there's, uh, as a theologian, I would say an eschatological perspective, something which goes beyond uh, space and time, then this striving makes sense as a broad picture and also our striving as human beings for meaning, for existence, for integrity, for identity and things like that. Only that makes sense if there is a reference point which is not just a movement within reality but something which is uh, outside of space-time reality.